Yeah, so for those who, who know my work and who know a little bit about Guam, we're kind of very famous for brown tree snakes. We have uh, kind of brown tree snakes came to the island as, as stowaways on U.S. military ships. After World War II, Guam became a U.S. territory after the Spanish-American War in 1898. And Guam is, is currently a, a U.S. colony or territory. And so because the snakes had no natural predators, they colonized the, the island very quickly and basically destroyed our entire native bird population. Many of these were flightless birds as well. And so this poem that I'm going to read is called From the Micronesian Kingfishers. Okay, that's one of our native birds in Chamorro, it's called Sihek. And it, it's endangered, it pretty much only exists uh, in zoos or uh, it's kind of bred in captivity. And so, you know, I'm very inspired also by the work of Charles Olson. So this, this poem is kind of in response to his uh, Kingfisher poem. Thank you again for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this last poem. From the Micronesian Kingfishers. What does not change is the will to colonize. I was still awake. I remembered no birds. How, when I entered the jungle was, emptied of bright blue, green, turquoise, red, gold feathers. Everywhere, brown tree snakes, avian silence. Yes, they have been talking strategically about Guam. The snakes entered without a word. When we saw them, they were at our doors, but it did not matter. They were already sliding along the passages of the night, finding themselves in the roots of empire. The Micronesian kingfishers, were last sighted on Guam in 1988. Their words have been species survival plan. Suddenly everyone captured and transferred 29 Micronesian kingfishers to US zoos for captive breeding. They stared at the birds, gasped. They repeated and repeated, could not go beyond their thought, quote, if it weren't for zoos, the Micronesian kingfisher would be gone forever, end quote. It was then the birds vanished. I thought of Chief Godal's drawing on stone and of what Chief Hodal said. They got the color of the breath of their breasts from the blood of our veins. The exterior features, quarter inch plywood screen mesh cage front, bumpers, burlap shield over screen mesh, interior ceiling, foam rubber or burlap stuffed with straw, external minimum size nine inch by nine inch, internal height minimum 10 inch clearance between floor and ceiling padding perching 0.5 inches diameter. The recommended minimum enclosure size for breeding pairs is 10 feet by 8 feet, with a height of 10 feet. Containment should be either solid material, wire mesh, or glass. For wire enclosures, mesh size should not exceed 1 inch. There have been several cases in which kingfishers have attacked their images reflected in glass cage fronts. These are the features, not the legends, the birds are birds almost all dead inside snake belly. Isihek will not spread seeds in trade winds or avert pests, nor without nest birth eggs to still the open air. It's true. It's difficult to place nest logs at this height in captivity. Attempts should be made to hang nest logs as high as is reasonable. The National Zoo has had success using a pulley system to lower and raise the nest log in order to check for eggs with minimal disturbance to the birds. Logs have been placed in several orientations with success. The most common is vertical placement, but pairs have successfully excavated and used logs that were placed horizontally, and those that have been placed with the core of the log exposed so that the pair had access to the soft, rotted center without excavating through the hard outer bark. On these simulacra, nest logs should be a minimum of two feet in length with a diameter of no less than 15 inches the Micronesian kingfisher is born and fed and dies. When snakes arrive, the jungle dies. Even the lati stones break, itata mutna arrive. Or enter the current colonizer we naturally depend upon. He makes us into himself. As in another time where treasures abuse and now, now listen, hands hold the endangered quote. A rare Micronesian kingfisher hatched at the National Zoo's Conservation and Research Center. The chick weighed 5.5 grams, 2004. Quote, our newest pair of Micronesian kingfishers at the San Diego Zoo is currently raising a chick, 2007. Quote, two of Guam's endangered Micronesian kingfishers were released from quarantine at the Department of Agriculture. 
The female birds arrived on Guam about a month ago from the Philadelphia Zoo. Both were hatched at the St. Louis Zoo, courtesy of Continental Airlines Pet Safe Program 2008. Quote, a Micronesian kingfisher recently hatched earlier this month at the Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago 2009. Quote, the St. Louis Zoo has hatched 41 chicks since 1985. Recent modifications to birdhouse habitats have now made it possible to house a pair of these rare birds for visitors to see. In this instance, the keepers rush in among our people, calling on us to protect the birds, yet all is still colony. What peace? Who stole our land? Not one trespass, but many. The accumulation of theft, the flag whip proves the flag whip is the law. Into our ancestral land we can't step. When land is polluted, we are. No one remains, nor will island. Around our disappearances, one common truth, we grow up caged. Else, how else is it? If we remain still, will we take, will we take pleasure now in what keeps us in captivity? To become incorporated should not be our future. We can be free. The signs are in the birds and the cages. The signs are destruction and control. Both involve colonizing. And what is a colony? A colony is a continuous chain of immeasurably destructive events in time. Is the death of air, is the death of water, is a death between the origin and the nation, between birth and the ending of all nests. Is thievery takes everything, and it's strong grasping when it suffocates our breath, this choked thing we are. We buried our dead facing the ocean, snake turn, knife salt of the tide, and we carried the bodies through the village, crying with our faces, with our faces to ocean, where the bones are buried beneath the house with love objects with our fingerprints. Isihek is in our hearts, but will we rise at the military that covers us all, look, can you bear it? Can you? Long enough, long enough for this to be necessary. Who will guide us to look into our own blood? But we must, in their blinding greed, look our contaminated land, the long absence of free hands. Look where our lost blood speaks, where old thirst breaks. Don't hide, look them in the eye. Don't run into shadows under their feet, embrace Embrace of rising, what trust, what justice, what rights to determine, what cuts our tongue. How fear, money, lust, and language can rot, what follows their flag, what saws within. Even though I have a passport, yet we must take risk, the risk of freedom most of all. As told through genealogy, our ancestors will bruise if we don't. Despite the difficulty, this is also true. If we are to survive, it is because we refuse to be slain in their territorial sun. Ask ourselves, will we resist where weapons mount? Rise above fences. Thank you so much for this.